The 2019 Nets were such an underdog story that everybody kind of became a fan of them that season. They were just so bad for so long due to the fallout from the Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce trade, but they had cap space and were able to take on Timothy Mozgov's contract from the Lakers, but were also given DeAndre Russell and him and Karis LeVert and others helped turn this team around. And then we all know what happened in the offseason. They were able to clear up two max slots, build up a respective reputation after making it to the playoffs, losing to Philly in round one, and then they signed Katie. D and Kyrie Irving. Now what is going on everybody? How is everybody doing today? We do know how that ended up falling out. It wasn't great as I ended up getting James Harden a year later and then the most they did was lose in round two to the Bucks in 2021. And now Kyrie's in Dallas, Harden's in Philly, and KD's in Phoenix. But yeah, we're going to be rebuilding this team without doing all of that. It's the 2019 Nets rebuild. This was a great season from D'Angelo Russell, who ended up as a warrior in the offseason. It was kind of like a sign and trade with KD, but not really. Spencer Dinwiddie, Alan Crabb, who was moved later in the offseason. We got Joe Harris as well, who they were able to keep and all that. Damari Carroll, Kara's Avert. Oh, remember Dezana Musa? Yeah. Rondé Hollis Jefferson, Jared Dudley, of course. Karooks. And then you had Kenneth Fareed, who was a little bit worse at this time. Jared Allen and Ed Davis. All right, so the starting five is going to be D'Angelo Russell, Kerry Levert, Joe Harris, Ronda Hollis, Jefferson, and Jared Allen. I'm using the same roster I used in the 76ers rebuild from a few days ago. So if you want to see what roster I'm using, just go check that video out. We have Dinwiddie, Damari Carroll, Kenneth Fareed, Ed Davis, Shabazz, Napier off the bench. We are a two-star defensive system under Kenny Atkinson. We'll see how we can do from that system this year. I don't think we're going to be very good. I don't know. I just feel like 2K is not going to make this net team a playoff team. But who knows? The Eastern Conference was not very good at this time outside of like the elite teams of Milwaukee, Toronto, Philly, and somewhat Boston. It was the Kyrie Celtics that just didn't work out. But we're off to a good start, actually. Nine and six to start the season. As our leading scorer is D'Angelo Russell, then Dinwiddie, Allen, RHJ. I would like to see Levert maybe do a little bit better and Joe Harris, who's not off to the greatest shooting start. All right, so we're around 500 exactly at it. 24 and 24, 48 games through the season. The Sixers are the one seed right now. The Toronto Raptors with Kawhi Leonard are the two seed. Then you have Boston and Milwaukee. Indiana, I believe, were the five seed at the time because they did lose to Boston in round one. And the Nets were the six seed because the Sixers were the three seed. Orlando, I believe, was the seventh seed. And then I think Detroit was the eight seed. This is, so this is pretty accurate right now, which is kind of crazy. It's not too bad in the West, but yeah, like the Lakers weren't good at this time. This was LeBron's first year in LA and it wasn't good whatsoever. So we could see what team we want to be at the deadline. Now, when it comes with any historic rebuild, the rosters aren't going to have perfect contracts. So everybody that's under contract is Dinwiddie, Joe Harris, Karis LeVert, Allen, Musa, and Karooks, which isn't bad whatsoever. That's a nice cap sheet going forward. All right, so D'Angelo Russell did make the All-Star game, averaging 20 points and 8 assists, shooting 35 from threes up to an 89 overall. He's on Team LeBron. Then you have Team Kawhi, which is funny to see Kawhi draft the team. Gordon Hayward in Boston is there, okay, with a young Jalen Brown and Tatum, so he's like the number one. You got Goran Dragic. You have this elite Pistons year out of Blake Griffin. I mean, yeah, he averaged 24 and 7.5 and 5.5 and and that year. So we got to figure out what team we want to be at the deadline. Do I want to be a seller? I don't think I really want to be a buyer at all. The Nets did have their first round pick at the time. And I believe they ended up trading up in the first round to get Kevin Jelly. They also got Nick Claxton in the 2019 draft as well in the second round. All right, so I'm going to be trading Kenneth Fareed, who is an expired contract for CJ Miles and the Raptors 2026 first which is technically the 2022 first. So this past draft where they ended up getting Grady Dick. So we are going to do that. We're going to be a slight seller there, but I think it's a soft sell. And then we're going to trade Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Whatever happened to him, I kind of liked him as a role player, especially on this 2019 Nets team, to the Thunder, who have Paul George and Russell Westbrook. We're going to be getting their 2025 first, which was their 2021 first round pick. This was before the Thunder blew it up, and they're going to agree to that. So we just added two new future first round picks to this team's core. And yeah, I don't know if we're going to be a great team to end the season, but at least we can stay somewhat respectable. Let's re-sign D'Angelo Russell. I do want to build this team around D'Lo, or not around him as like him the number one, but at least the two or the three. So let's pay D'Lo to come back for four more years. Levert, I don't need to re-sign just yet, so that is going to be the only move we are going to make at the contract extension deadline. And let's see how this team finishes out the 2019 season. Oh, and Spencer Dinwiddie dislocates his left patella. He's going to be out for the season. This was something that eventually happens at the Nets, or he had a season-long injury. We are four games under 500 right now now in the first year of these rebuilds the playing tournament is going to be into effect but we may finish as a top six seed which would be kind of sick after getting two additional first round picks 
at the deadline. Jared Allen has been very good for us. I think we definitely have our point guard and center building block for the remainder of the video. And yeah, we are having a really good end to the season. We are going to finish above 500. We go 42 and 40, which I believe is the exact record that the Nets had this year. Yeah, 42 and 40. That is crazy. James Harden is your MVP. Luka Doncic, rookie of the year. Harden did not win MVP. This was Giannis's first MVP, I believe. Yeah, Harden won the year prior. Luka, like I said, rookie of the year. Brandon Ingram gets six men of the year. This eventually happened the following year in 2020 after the AD trade. LeBron gets Depoy and D'Lo, most improved. Let's go. Brett Brown, coach of the year for the Sixers. Shout out to Carl Anthony Towns, making all NBA first team. There is all NBA second team. Third team with Jimmy Butler staying in Minnesota because this is the start of the 2019 season. You got Chris Paul in Houston, Blake Griffin in Detroit. And yeah, we finished the season as the sixth seed, which is exactly what happened. This time though, we are taking on Boston in round one. D'Lo was our top guy, 21 and a half points, three and a half rebounds, 8.1 assists. Also a steal and a half a night, which is pretty sweet. So yeah, with all the trades and the Dinwiddie injury, we're gonna see like Alan Crabb and Shabazz Napier get more minutes and we win game one. This is kind of what happened. I was actually at that game when the Nets beat the Sixers in game one and bead was kind of playing i don't even know if he ended up playing in that game but yeah we pull off the upset here it was actually a competitive like gentleman sweep from the sixers as the celtics beat us by three here in game two kyrie irving going off i mean he's 27 years old in this so we're basically getting prime kyrie i don't know though he did struggle in round two against the milwaukee bucks alan craig with 23 points we do lose by 19 kyrie is just owning us against his would then be his future team we do win game four though we're we won by 15. D'Lo with 28 points. Heck, I would say this is a success of a year. We just pushed the Celtics to at least six games. And it would be insane if we were able to force a game seven. But I will not be getting my hopes up. Yep, we ended up losing in six. We ended up losing by 32 here. So, you know what? It was still a solid season. And you have the Houston Rockets versus the Boston Celtics. In the finals, what? The Warriors beat the Trailblazers in the conference finals because KD got hurt against the Rockets in round two. Celtics, like I said, lost to Milwaukee in round two. They beat Philly in seven. And then the Houston Rockets with Chris Paul and James Harden win it all. So no like super notable retirements. I believe Dwayne Wade and... Dirk Nowitzki retired at the end of this season. Our first round pick is going to be at 17, which is exactly what they got in real life. And they ended up flipping it with Alan Krebs' contract to Atlanta to get that second max slot. But the Trailblazers, who were in the conference finals, win the lottery. Hornets at two of the 2019 draft. They took PJ Washington in the lottery and then the Pistons there at three. So we're going to see Zion join Dane. That'd be kind of sweet. We are going to keep Kenny Atkinson around. We're just going to sign a kind of uh, training staff, but we were pretty good on injuries this past year. And we signed three guys. Nice. All right, I'm going to try to move Musa and Karus to the Lakers for Mo Wagner and pick 24. They would want two seconds. You'll give me a second. All right, I'll agree to that. So yeah, I plan on making my selections here. All right, so at pick 16, Kobe White is available. He did go in the top 10 to the Chicago Bulls. DeAndre Hunter is here as well. Cam Reddish. I mean, this draft class honestly wasn't the best. Jordan Poole is here, and I don't know if he's going to be there at 24. But ah, do I want Kobe White? You know, we'll take Jordan Poole at 16. He did go at the end of the first round. And then we do have Nick Claxton, Goga Badatze. We have DeAndre Hunter, Cam Reddish, Keldon Johnson. Cameron Johnson is here. Wow. Okay, that's kind of crazy. Uh, Grant Williams. I'm going to go with DeAndre Hunter here as my second first round pick. So yeah, we're going to sign these guys, a Michigan guy and a Virginia guy. So we do have a ton of cap space if we want to offer like a Kawhi Leonard a contract, which isn't a terrible idea. I don't mind going after a big name. I think like we're fine with our sixth man in Dinwiddie. I'm fine with Levert coming off the bench, but also cool with him starting. We're good at center and point guard. So we could look to add another wing or maybe power forward. I think also with like Joe Harris and Jordan Poole and Levert, we don't need like maybe another shooting guard. I mean, there are some loaded guys here. I guess like Devin Booker shouldn't be here. I don't know if I want Middleton. I mean, KD. Kawhi is so good in these that I think I would love Kawhi. So I'm going to offer Raptors Kawhi a four-year deal. We'll see if we can snag him. Chris Stops is here. He should be restricted at this time. I mean, that's the same with Booker. We could offer him a deal, but I think I'd rather just wait till next year. So, you know, let's see. Do we get Kawhi Leonard? Ah, unfortunately, we do not. As Kawhi signs with the team that technically drafted him, the Indiana Pacers. I don't know if I really want to go after an Al Horford or Kemba or DeAndre Jordan or really anybody else. So I'm going to bring in Marcus Morris on a two-year deal with a team option. I'm going to look to bring in Trevor Ariza on a one-year deal and also snag Rudy Gay on a two-year deal. 
deal with a team option as well. We also could use another center to join Jared Allen and Mo Wagner. So I'm going to get Dwayne Dedman probably after we get these guys. Nah, I could probably get somebody cheaper. We'll do Aaron Baines. Remember him? So yeah, we'll get those guys. We didn't really do too much in free agency. We added Jordan Poole this offseason. We'll see if this team can still do better next year. So we see D'Lo go up two overalls. Jared Allen up four. That's really it at the current moment. All right, so for this season, it's going to be a interesting team. It's D'Lo, Harris, Ariza, Gay, Allen with Dinwiddie, Levert, Poole, Morris, and DeAndre Hunter off the bench. We could definitely be a seller at the deadline again if we wanted to move off of Marcus Morris or Ariza or Rudy Gay. We'll see. But we did add some veterans to this team and Ariza gets hurt on the first game of the season in which we lost by 18 to the San Antonio Spurs, unfortunately. Jared Allen had a good game. So yeah, I don't think we're going to do too good this season. Uh, and Daniel Russell breaks his right leg. He's going to be out six to eight weeks. We're kind of screwed. I mean, we are 12 and 10 to start the year, which is solid at the moment, but losing our best player who's averaging 23 points and seven and a half assists is going to kill us. All right, next man up, Spencer Dinwiddie. Yeah, so we're still without D'Angelo Russell for four to six weeks. 17 and 22 record, not doing too hot. Jared Allen has definitely stepped up though. He's averaging 17 points and 11 half rebounds, 64% from the field and 2.8 blocks a night. Spencer Dinwiddie's averaging 15, four and five, not too bad, 39% from three. Joe Harris is shooting 45% from three. Karis LeVert has been much better this season. But yeah, we're definitely hurting with no D'Angelo Russell and there goes Marcus Morris with an injury. That's just like third of the year. Looking at like the award races, Russ is the front runner to win MVP, still in OKC. Kawhi there indeed. Boy, that's funny. Kristaps signed with the Clippers. All right, so it is the 2020 All-Star Draft. You have Team Giannis and Team Russ. I don't think we're going to have any All-Stars yet just because D'Angelo Russell and his injury that happened. John Wall, a starter there, t uh, still in Washington, which is pretty cool. Kristaps on the Clippers is an All-Star. You got Victor Oladipo still balling out in Indiana. DeMarcus Cousins in Golden State being a beast and we are now 22 and 30 the Sixers are just killing it right now so yeah we are currently the 11th seed in the east and with the trade deadline this week I think we are going to be sellers damn that demo injury really did kill us the Utah Jazz are interested in giving me first round picks for Rudy Gay I mean I can't really turn that down and the Clippers want to give me a first round pick for campaign who we signed uh just as like a veteran minimum and Trevor Ariza for Mike Scott so yeah we're just adding more draft capital to our list we have a Jazz pick there we have a Thunder pick. We have a Clippers pick, a Raptors pick, another Jazz pick. We're kind of chilling on first right now. And then lastly, I do want to see if I can move Marcus Morris. Yeah, and I'm going to get a future second round pick out of him for Jermichael Green. So I will see you guys at the end of the year. I would be very shocked if this team made the playoffs. All right, I'm going to give Karis LeVert a two-year extension worth $8 million per year. And basically the same thing with Joe Harris. So at this point, let's just kind of continue tanking and maybe we can add uh, Anthony Edwards to this squad or Tyrese Halliburton. So Nikola Jokic wins the 2020 MVP award, which ended up going to Giannis. Zion Williamson in Charlotte is your rookie of the year. Ben Simmons, six man, Kawhi Leonard, Depoy, and Tatum most improved. Mike Malone of the Nuggets does get coach of the year. See any shockers on the first two teams? Donovan Mitchell in Utah? Nope, not really. I guess Chris stops maybe on uh, the LA Clippers. I'm hoping free agency is solid in year two. We're going to have to wait and see. But Jared Allen, all defensive first team. This man is a beast at the five spot for us. And we did not make the playoffs, which is okay. I kind of wanted to be kind of a poor team this year. We went 30 and 52, which had the second worst record in the East. We'll probably be around the projected fifth overall pick on lottery night. Devo finished with a solid season. Uh, there's Jared Allen, Dinwiddie, still part of our core. Lavert was kind of not great. So there's a chance he could get traded. Joe Harris shot 45 from three. I think he definitely needs to be in the rotation next year. Mike Scott, we got in a trade. Same with Michael Green. Jordan Poole, as a rookie, wasn't too bad. Not at all in his age 19, 20 season. And then there's DeAndre Hunter, who definitely struggled. Joel Embiid is your Eastern Conference Finals MVP and LeBron in the West. Sixers versus the Lakers in the Finals and the Sixers win in seven with Embiid being your Finals MVP. You got Vince Carter, Zach Randolph, Pau Gasol, Dwayne Wade, uh, Nene all there retiring. Dwayne Wade on the Hornets, Gasol on the Suns. It's just funny. Dwayne Wade does head to the Hall of Fame. Well, Pau Gasol definitely deserves and Vince Carter. So let's hope that the draft lottery can treat us well. We have the fifth projected pick. All right, so the Trailblazers just jumped into the top four which i feel like we're gonna drop don't drop to seven okay that is good we don't drop to seven there's a chance we drop to six which isn't the okay we don't drop to six let's go that means we end up in the top four that's what i'm talking about we're gonna end up with a top four pick and yeah let's go so in the 2020 draft 
man, I would love top three. It's a kind of a guard heavy draft with, okay, a couple point guards at the top with uh, at least LaMelo Ball, Halbert, and Maxi. So I would love to get Anthony Edwards as my shooting guard. And we're going to have either one or two. Let's see who gets number one. And it's the Brooklyn Nets. Let's freaking go. We get lucky, lucky in the 2020 lottery. You know, the Nets got their two max slots in real life. I get the number one overall pick in the 2020 draft. We could dangle that pick on the trade market, but I think I want to just take Anthony Edwards. I mean, if we take a look at the mock drafts, we could theoretically move D'Angelo Russell to the shooting guard spot and then draft LaMelo Ball, but I think I'm just going to make everybody's life easier and draft Anthony Edwards number one overall. So yeah, LaMelo Ball goes two to Washington, Halliburton three to Memphis, Precious Anjoa four to Portland, and then five is Desmond Bain to the Warriors. How far does Maxi slide as quickly goes six? There goes James Wiseman, seven to the Suns, and then there's Maxi to the Hawks. In the second round, I'm going to take Aaron Neesmith out of Vanderbilt, who was the last pick of the lottery by the Celtics, as Anthony Edwards is an 80 overall, 18 years old. That's hype. And yeah, we're going to sign both these guys right here. Jared Allen and Mo Wagner, I will give the team options to. Yeah, I was like, yeah, do I want to bring back Mo Wagner? Why not? I think we should still have a max spot, which I would love if there was a sick power forward all right and anthony davis is here i don't think i would be able to get him but man that would be kind of sick i'm actually going to trade mo wagner to the sixers for a future first round pick and i'm going to give anthony davis everything i can i don't think we're going to get him just because he has so many other offers yeah if he goes to toronto over us that would hurt a little bit dream on green would be a very interesting plan b on this team no brooklyn connection whatsoever but it could be Kind of a dope pickup. So let's see. Do we get Anthony Davis? We do not. He goes to Toronto. So you know what? If the Warriors... Oh, okay. They do offer Dream on a deal. But DeMontis Sabonis is here. Unrestricted free agency. Let's stack Sabonis. Three years, 18 million a year. That'd be a really big pickup if we can get him. And let's go. We get DeMontis Sabonis. So right now, our starting five would be Devo with the one. Dimwitty backing him up. We have Edwards at the two. Harrison Poole off the bench. Maybe Levert starting Hunter there at the three. Savonis at the four, Allen at the five. I do need to sign some other big men. Let's take a flyer on Christian Wood for two years. And let's also bring in Yaka Pertle on a two-year contract as well. We get Christian Wood and Pertle signs with Detroit. So I'm going to look to bring back Derek Favors to Brooklyn. Well, he played on the New Jersey Nets. A one-year deal, basically, with the second year being a team option. So here is player progression. I guess with the injury, Devo does go down in his overall. I'm excited to see what the Allen Sabonis frontcourt can look like. It will lack floor spacing, obviously. All right, so it's going to be a Devo. Anthony Edwards, Joe Harris, DeMonta Sabonis, Jared Allen starting five with Spencer Dinwiddie, Derek Favors, Jordan Poole, and Karis LeVert off the bench. We're going to change uh, system proficiency to at least balance from defense under Kenny Atkinson. All right, so let's see what this team can do. First game of the season's at home against the Grizzlies. We ended up losing by three. Anthony Edwards had 21 points in his debut. All right, let's stop when we get our first win. Oh, lost to the Celtics by 26. The Rockets just won it all, so we lost to them by 20. We should get a win out of these two. Let's go. We end up beating the Bulls by two, or excuse me, by one, then the Spurs by two. Edwards and Dinwiddie and Russell and Allen all did great in our first win. And yeah, it's nice beating the Spurs as well. All right, so we've had some notable injuries this season, but the Jared Allen DeMonta Sabonis frontcourt isn't playing as well as I was hoping it to do. This would be kind of a disappointing end to the season if we don't make the play in tournaments. So I'm hoping we could turn it around, but yeah, this is pretty brutal to watch. All right, so Kawhi Leonard and Kevin Durant are your all-star captains. DeAndre Russell is a reserve on Team K. KD. That is all we got there. We are 22 and 30. We've been playing a little bit better as of late. Currently, we are the 10th seed in the Eastern Conference, though. We do need to turn it around if we do want to make the playoffs. Currently, DeAndre Hunter is out two to four months. He tore a left elbow ligament, which is pretty brutal to see. Jordan Poole is having a very good sophomore year for sure. Anthony Edwards is having a great rookie year. Actually, I, I'll take it back on the great. It's a solid rookie season for the sec or for the first overall pick. Shooting 29 from three and 70 from the line isn't great. Uh, there's Jared Allen still being kind of that top scorer for us, which I didn't really expect. And then you got Dinwiddie and Sabonis, who's also struggling to shoot the ball as well. So yeah, we've definitely been disappointing this season. Maybe if I get an offer for Sabonis, I will take it. So we're here at the trade deadline, and I'm going to be sending Karis LeVert, end of an era of him in Brooklyn, 
Derek favors to Golden State for Eric Gordon, one of the league's best three-point shooters, 32 years old, getting a veteran to come off the bench for us because we do have a very young starting five with Sabonis, D'Lo, Ant, and Jared Allen. So they are going to agree to that. And then we're going to be sending Joe Harris and Christian Wood to the LA Lakers for a future first-round pick down the line and Gorgie Zhang to be our backup five, most likely, for the remainder of this season. So now we can also start Jordan Poole, which is kind of sweet. I'm going to have Eric Gordon come off the bench as our sixth man where he's going to get about 25 minutes a night and with DeAndre Hunter out still we'll probably go like what 14 to Gorgie Zhang and then we can give some minutes to Aaron Neesmith until DeAndre Hunter comes back so I don't think that this team is going to be a top six seed by any means I do think we can sneak into the play-in tournament and let's hope that is the case as we've been playing definitely better as of late five games under 500 at the contract extension deadline Dinwiddie does have a player option I do think he's going to opt into that so I'm not really going to resign anyone Jared Allen is not happy with the team luckily for us though he will be restricted so he'll be in net next year don't worry Russell Westbrook is your 2021 MVP LaMelo Ball is your rookie of the year in Washington. He ended up winning it for another Southeast Division team in real life. Shea, sixth man of the year in LA. Giannis gets deep point. Garland most improved. All NBA first team consists KD on the Pelicans. So he decided to go to New Orleans. AD goes to Toronto. What happened in the 2019 offseason? Damn, LeBron got hurt. But there is D'Angelo Russell, an all-NBA third team. Elite shooting season from Devo. 65% true shooting. 22 points, four rebounds, nine assists, a steal and a half a night. He was phenomenal for us. Jimmy Butler is also in Dallas with Luka, so he didn't go to Miami. Hassan Whiteside dominating in Cleveland, I guess. And we did finish the season as the seventh seed. We played well to end the year. We ended up going 40 and 42. I need to make it out of the playing tournament. Anthony Edwards has a minor injury that he could play through right now, but I really like that pickup of Eric Gordon for us. I thought that was a massive addition for us at the deadline. And we are pretty much healthy outside of the minor ant injury. So Gorgi Shang's gonna get like 10 minutes tonight. I think DeAndre Hunter is fine at 15. I would like to give Jordan Poole a little bit more. Uh, 21, we could do 25 to Dinwiddie. We'll probably do like 35 to Edwards, 34 to Allen, 30. Ah, uh, let's see here. We'll do 37 to Dilo, 31 to Gordon, and then 32 to Sabonis. We're three and a half star balanced now under Kenny Atkinson. Can we beat a Milwaukee Bucks team that consists of Eric Bledsoe, Dante DiVincenzo, Rodney Hood, Giannis, Serge Ibaka, they have Ursan Elias Silva, Yogi Ferrell, shout out Indiana, right? Yeah, shout out Indiana, Terrence Ross, and DeAnthony Melton. I do think that we could beat this Bucks team, but I don't think it's a given at all. Let's see what happens here. we are go back and forth in the first half. Very competitive game here in the fourth quarter. d currently has 16 points as we end up going down by 11 with two and a half to go, which means we are going to lose to the Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis had almost a 33-point triple-double. So we are going to be taking on either Cleveland or Atlanta, and it is the Cleveland Cavaliers who drafted RJ Barrett instead of like Darius Garland. They still have Colin Sexton and Kevin Love. So let's see what happens here. We get off to a solid start. Come on, don't, I mean, like, we have our first round pick, so I don't really mind not, like, making the playoffs, but I would like to do it with this team. Don't choke in the fourth, and we end up beating them by 17. We scored 39 points in the fourth quarter. Behind Sabonis, doing something for us. Gives me 26 there. Ant with 23. D'Lo with 21 and 11. Eric Gordon, man, he's been good for us. But now we're going to take on Philly, who has Fultz, Clay, Crab, Covington, and Bead, Vucevic, Ben Simmons off the bench. Oh, my God. Tyler Johnson, Shamit, Marquise Chris. They've been freaking Simmons off the bench. This team is sick. All right. I don't even know if I'm going to win one game and we win game one by two. All right. We pull off the upset. That's what I'm talking about. Game number two, we end up losing, unfortunately. Oof. We kind of got blown out. Yeah. On the road in Philly. Game number three, we end up losing. Ah, Sabonis had 18. Clay had 35. I thought we were going to maybe pull off the upset of the century. But we end up getting kind of blown out in the next three games. And they win four in a row. So basically the exact series order of what happened during the 2019 playoffs. All right, so maybe Sabonis wasn't the addition I needed to make. But maybe I just got to keep developing Anthony Edwards and D'Angelo Russell. As Gordon Hayward was an Eastern Conference Finals MVP for the Boston Celtics. Russ in the West. The Celtics actually went up 2-0. And then the Thunder won four in a row. Russ gets finals MVP. So there goes Dirk. He retires on the Orlando Magic. There goes Tony Parker. Played his last season also on the Magic a year ago. You have Iggy retiring on the Hornets. Dwight on the Kings. There's JR, JJ Redick, Gerald Green, and Zabo Sefalusha. Zabo, not Zabo or whatever I almost said there. But we got Dirk. 
Dwight and Mello all heading to the Hall of Fame. And it is draft lottery time. We do have the Rockets pick at 18, or excuse me, that's Philly. We do have the Jazz pick at 19. We have the Thunder pick at 30, and we do have our first round pick at 17. So three first. All right. This is obviously the 2022 class in which I would love to add like an Evan Mobley to this team or a Scotty Barnes. I mean, Cade Cunningham would also be a dream. We're going to keep Kenny Atkinson as our coach for one more year. All right, I'm going to try to move 17, 19, 30, 43, and 56 to get up into the top 10. Let's see if the Blazers would do something at five. I would give you this Clippers first, or would I rather give you Toronto's first next year? I will give you my first round pick unprotected next year. So four firsts to move up basically from 17 to five and two seconds they agree to that so i'm getting one of either cade green mobley barnes or wagner i kind of hope i can get scotty barnes but we'll see detroit at number one they don't take cade cunningham they take evan mobley number two is jalen green goes where he went in real life um at number two but not to the same team nicks at three uh cade oh my god they take scotty barnes all right, um, I did not think Cade was going to fall to four. Please don't take Cade. You have Curry. You don't need Cade. Please, let's go. Cade Cunningham falls to me at pick number five. What a trade up. All right, I don't even know what my lineup is going to look like next year. I'm thinking maybe it's Cade at the one, Dilo at the two, Ant at the three. Wow, I did not expect Cade Cunningham to fall to me at five. Josh Giddy goes four. That was kind of a shocker. So let's sign Cade. I don't know if we're going to have cap space. Then would he opts in as I expected him to. We're not going to pick up the team option on Aaron Neesmith. LeBron's a free agent. Same with Paul George. Blake Griffin. Eh, he wasn't that eventually, but he was kind of falling off at this time. We do have about $35 million in cap space, but I do want to bring back Jared Allen. I mean, Giannis is here. So is Tatum LeBron. Oh, this is kind of like a loaded free agency class, but I do want to bring back Jared Allen who doesn't want to resign. I mean, he would be restricted at this time anyway. So I did offer him a four-year deal. Also going to try to sign Evita Zubats on a two-year deal to be the backup center. And we get Allen and Zubats. Let's go. Giannis goes to the Wizards. Tatum to the Thunder. What? They just won it all. So PG States. What? They were able to do this and keep Russ? You gotta be kidding me. I do like this team. I like the core we have. It's a very young team. Eric Gordon does regress. I mean, I'm not surprised. All right, so this is what the rotation is gonna look like. It's gonna be Kate at the one, D'Lo at the two, Edwards three, Sabonis four, Allen five, with Eric Gordon, Spencer Dinwiddie, Jordan Poole, Ibiza Zubats, and DeAndre Hunter off the bench. Three-star balanced. First game of the season's on the road against the Raptors, and we ended up losing by 20. I know this team is still very young, but I would like to be a top six seed in the East. If not, Kenny Atkinson is getting fired. All right, so we're here at the All-Star Draft. Russell Westbrook and Giannis are the captains. Do we get any All-Stars this season? It doesn't look like we do. All right, um, we are 22 and 29, though. Very disappointing season again. I mean, I do wonder if, like, a Cade, D'Lo, Ant, Big 3 could really work. Sabonis has been better this season, but I'm just starting to wonder, like, is him and Jared Allen going to work out in that front court position? Anthony Edwards has been fine. delo has been good. I don't know how we're not, like, close to above 500. I think we could make a major move at the deadline, which is basically this week. And I have to remember, I traded my first round pick away to get Cade Cunningham, basically. I'm going to be trading Spencer Dinwiddie to the Minnesota Timberwolves for Rui Hashimura. <laughs> End of an era of Dinwiddie in Brooklyn. We'll probably go with Cade off the bench for the remainder of the year. I might go with DeAndre Hunter as a starting small forward. But yeah, let's see if this team can turn it around. You know what? If we don't even get a playoff series victory, Kenny is out the door. Luka wins MVP, Evan Mo Probably rookie of the year on the Detroit Pistons. Ben Simmons gets sixth man of the year. Giannis Depoy in Washington. Kobe White, most improved in Indiana. I thought I almost drafted him back in the 2019 draft. LeBron signed with the Pistons. All right, this, this 2022 season is all out of whack. Jamal Murray is on the Orlando Magic. Yeah, Tatum's on the Thunder. Nobody's on their original team anymore, really. Donovan Mitchell's in Miami. The Brooklyn Nets, though, did not make the playing tournament. And <laughs> my dumbass traded away that pick. Oh, watch it just jump up into the top four. All right, I'm not playing around. This is going to be a very big offseason 
changes are going to be made. Kawhi Leonard is your Eastern Conference Finals MVP and Luka in the West and the Mavericks beat the Pacers in six with Luka averaging a triple double. Some notable retirements here at the end of the 2022 season. Don't tell me that pick moves up. Okay, we ended up trading the eighth overall pick. Not the worst thing in the world. We do have the 23rd overall pick from the Clippers and 29 via the Raptors. So I still have two firsts. Kenny Atkinson's contract was done. So we are going to go after probably Budenholzer, Nick Nurse, Monty Williams, Mike Malone. I'm throwing the bag at everyone. And the only one that signs with us is Mike Budenholzer. So welcome to the Nets, Mike. So Jabari Smith Jr. went number one to the Jazz, Powell two to Minnesota, Ivy three to Golden State. Somebody was just slamming on their horn outside. We did get Blake Wesley and Carlton Myers here in the first round. Both of those guys could end up getting traded. All right, so I'm going to trade to Eric Gordon and Rui Hashimura to the Lakers from Malik Monk. I think an upgrade over Gordon right now and Tari Eason to take a flyer on him. We don't have any free agents of our own. I'm going to look to bring in the time board as a backup center, a three-year $38 million deal. That's great. And then if I can also snag D'Anthony Melton to come in, that would be nice as well. As Kawhi goes to the Denver Nuggets, Luka to the Rockets, Russ to Cleveland, Devin Booker to San Antonio, Trey Young to Dallas, Kyrie back to the Clippers. All right, so player progression. Could this be a team that wins a championship? I don't really know. I've been looking to move Sabonis, but every time I like throw him up in the trade finder, I can never get anything for him that I think is worth trading him for. So we're up here to present day of 2023. All right, so let's see how the team can do under Mike Budenholzer. We're a four-star balanced team. I'm hoping for the best this season. We start off the season with an L. We never win to start off the year, but hey, there we go. We beat Boston in the second game of the season. So we didn't have any all-stars here in 2023, but we are 39 and 15. So I'm putting the blame on Kenny Atkinson. We are the one seed in the Eastern Conference, half a game better than the Pacers who don't have Kawhi anymore, but they still have a good team. And I am just praying that this team can go all the way this season. We've had some injuries. We're doing all right right now. I don't know though. It's a good team on paper, so we'll see. Luka wins MVP on the Rockets. Hollow Rookie of the Year on the T-Wolves. Simmons, Sixth Man of the Year again. Kawhi, Depoy in Denver. And Brett Brown, Coach of the Year for Philly. So yeah, that Sixers team is definitely going to be the one to beat. Even, wait, is Brett Brown like the coach of the Pacers? Okay, I was going to say that would make sense for them being a fourth seed. So we could not get that one seed and end up going to the Pacers. We're taking on the Hornets in round one who have Bradley Beal and Zion Williamson. Here were the end of the season stats. Anthony Edwards was our leading scorer. I'm praying that this team can get it done and we can maybe win it all this year. We do beat the Hornets just by four to open up the playoffs. Game two, we end up winning though. That's more like it. Winning by what? 35 points. Ant with 32, Cade with 22 points in 18 minutes. We go up 3-0. We beat them by 20. That's what I'm talking about. Just don't blow a 3-0 lead to a 7 seed. Thank you. We end up sweeping them. That's what I'm talking about. Now we're going to take on the Miami Heat who have Garland and Donovan Mitchell. So basically the modern day Cavs backcourt. They still have Bam and Abayo. They got Jordan Bell, Jaleel Okafor, Rodney Hood. Can we beat them and go to the conference finals? Let's go. We beat them in five. It was a pretty evenly distributed game here in the, against the Heat as we had eight guys in double figures. But now we're going to take on the Indiana Pacers. They got coach of the year. They got the one seed. It's a very good team. Remember Eli Okobo? He was like the first pick of the second round i forget what year if it was 2017 or 2016 they beat us by one in game one that may come back and bite us because if they go up 2-0 come on all right we need to win both of these if we want any shot okay two to one beat them by four come on please win game four and we're alive no damn it well Series is basically over, and we lose it fun. Come on, I thought I had it this year. All right, we got one more year left. I gotta break up this band. I don't know. We did just make it to the conference finals, and we have a young team, but I don't know though. We've really got like to, uh, to upgrade this squad. Carmelo and LeBron. Wait, didn't Lamelo or excuse me, not Lamelo, Carmelo go to the Hall of Fame last year? So that doesn't make sense. Yeah, I guess Melo makes it to the Hall of Fame twice in a row. Shout out to Lamarcus Aldridge making it. That's pretty cool. And guess who has the third overall pick in the draft from the Nets? We do. Thunder have a chance to get Wemby at number one. We also have Philly's pick at 22 and our pick at 28. All right, I'm trying to make the Pacers worse because maybe this makes them worse next year. I'm going to be getting Mitchell Robinson and Michael Porter Jr. for Tari Eason, Blake Wesley, number three and a second. And then I'm going to trade Mitchell Robinson and my two first in the 20s for Mikel Bridges and Ricky Rubio. So the OKC Thunder did get Wemby, Scoot goes two to Washington, and they also have LaMelo. So that's funny how that almost happened. 
in Charlotte this year. Let's give Jordan Poole and DeAndre Hunter the qualifying offers. We're going to bring back D'Angelo Russell. I kind of have to bring back DeMontis Sabonis. We're going to match Jordan Poole's offer from the Suns, and we bring back DeAndre Hunter on a four-year deal. All right, if this team doesn't maybe win it all next year, I'm going to be a little bit upset because it's the final season. I mean, this team is just too good not to go all the way. And Luka gets another MVP with the Houston Rockets. But guys, under Mike Boonholzer this year, we went 73-9. and We tied the 2016 Warriors. If this team does not win it all, I give up. It is just like has so much talent. Like in my opinion, we got Anthony Edwards, who was like our fourth leading scorer. Devo's still running the show, which is cool to see. We kept Jared Allen and we brought in guys like Michael Porter Jr., Anthony Edwards, Hunter, Cade, Sabonis, Time Lord, Monk, Bridges. It's stacked. So I ain't dealing with 2K's BS today. I'm going to simulate the playoffs. Now, if I don't see the Eastern Conference Finals MVP of the Brooklyn Nets and it says we got eliminated, I lose my mind. Thank you. All right, D'Angelo Russell, Eastern Conference Finals MVP, Luka in the West. We went 12 and 2. Let's finish it off. I mean, they're pretty good. They got two elite lefties, Luka and Harden. Or is Luka a lefty? Oh, Luka might not be one. Uh, Reddish, Harry Giles, Clint Capella, Sekou Dumboya, AJ Griffin. Please beat them. Don't lose to them. Let's go. We end up beating them. And finally, the Brooklyn Nets win a championship so if you guys did enjoy the video let me know in the comments which historic rebuild we should do next i hope you guys have been enjoying them just kind of taking a trip down memory lane and doing some throwback rebuilds so yeah if you guys did enjoy please drop a thumbs up i love you guys and i'll catch y'all in the next one peace